see them face to face. And that little voice on the side of your head tells you, you better listen or you'll be dead. The birds chirping, the smell of fresh cut grass, your child wanting to hold your hand. You just don't see any of that. I'll see decisions on the battlefield, the brain, the foot, taking a tourniquet off of that guy and putting it on that guy because he was dying. Would he have still lived? Image is a little girl that was killed. She looked fine, but absolutely lifeless, you know, staring at me straight into my soul. You don't want to close your eyes because you don't want to go back to that place. Speed is security. It's harder to catch up to. It's harder to ram a vehicle that's going fast. Bridge abutments, culverts, ditches, a dead animal. That's where they plant the IEDs. You can smell it, you can taste it, and you can see it. You don't know where the hell you're at. It's impossible to enjoy life. I remember growing up, uh, helping my dad work on his truck or the tractor or the lawnmower, changing tires or sprockets or the oil. I enjoyed it. When I got to the military, I got fast tracked on working on the four wheelers, working on Humvees, working on the pickup trucks. Because if it was broke, then it was up to us to fix it. When I got to Fort Bragg, I had an opportunity to go to a school where special forces guys go. I was selected and started my time at 3rd Special Forces Group. Bobby, what are you doing this morning? Tell us about your fun-filled day. My first early on couple of deployments were all direct action, searching and finding the enemy and eliminating them. I knew that I had taken multiple lives at that point, some of them point blank and you don't think about it at the time. It's the afterthoughts. And then eventually it, it's just as if you're going to work. You don't think about it anymore. You get so numb. You'd be home for a very short amount of time and you roll right back out the door to do it again. The first time I got shot, it felt like somebody hit me with a two by four in my back. I spun around the Engage again, got hit in the left knee. I was scared I wasn't gonna be here for my kids. After I got shot, I went back to Kandahar. We got a medevac call that another Special Forces guy was wounded. And I went over to the first aid station and uh, I seen him coming through the double doors dead. Went to the Q course together, two kids, same age as my boys. And that's when it all changed. And it was all to get revenge. My rage never stopped. I would get home and try and be a husband and a father, and it didn't work out too well. I was basically distant, cold, angry over nothing. I mean, literally nothing. I kept going back to Afghanistan for the guys on the left and right of me. Whoa, I thought we were taking rockets. Oh! 
And that was the only life that I knew for 10 deployments, you know, 10 years. Bullet hole number two, hit right here and hit the 25th soldier that was sitting right here. After being shot three times, I was blown up with an IED and that's when everything closed in on me. My body went septic December 2010, basically shut down because of shrapnel. I couldn't sleep. Every time I shut my eyes, the nightmares. Reached a point where I did not want to live anymore. May 1st, 2011. Stuck the Glock in my mouth. My children flashed through my head. I did not pull the trigger. It was a breaking point. You've seen too much, you've done too much. You can't do that mentally. I moved to Texas January of 14. I was medically retired out of the Army after 22 years. The divorce happened. I was in the garage cleaning out stuff I needed to move, and I found the bow case. A friend of mine had given me a bow a few years back. It ended up sitting on a shelf because of all the deployments. I remember that evening, I just picked it up and started shooting it, and it was quiet. But that was a good thing. It became something I could do that I had enjoyment. I'd used the tools of war for so long, I needed something else, something different. And that was what the bow was for me. I didn't even realize what it was doing for me. After shooting it for you know 30 minutes or an hour, it was like therapy. Because the only thing you're thinking about when you're shooting a bow is literally just shooting a bow, not about what happened. I was completely transitioning away from everything I was used to for the last 10 plus years to something more graceful. And you're processing your day as you walk up to get your arrows and as you walk back to get your arrows. It's getting healed 20 yards at a time. Although archery was an important factor for me to get healthy, I also did other things art therapy, music therapy, journaling, and mission trips. Then honey cutting into it. I enjoy it, getting your gear together, and prepping your bag, the two days before, the night before. What if this happens? Well, I need this, well, I need that. You always end up taking more than you actually need. You never end up using it all. The bow was ultimately the vehicle that got me back out in the woods.
I've learned so much just sitting there in a tree stand, just watching, not taking a shot. Your senses get back in tune with nature. You can hear every little chipmunk that sounds like an elephant coming off the, the dried leaves. That's the beauty about it. Some guys will chase the horns. Some guys don't, you know, it's really up to them. It was about me getting outside and enjoying something again. Find happiness. Then you can hear the deer come up, the real soft footstep. And they're cautious because they might sense something's there, but they don't know if something's there. It's a beautiful thing to be able to sit down and actually hear those things. You haven't been able to slow down all the way up until that point in your life. It forces you to do that. Now, I crave it. Literally, I crave it. It's awesome. It's a deep found appreciation killing a deer because I know it's providing food for my family. And I don't take that lightly. Life is so fragile. Sometimes it's just about being alone. Other times, I'm here to be with my teammates. But every time I come here, it's about appreciation. 
honey requires you to be present in that exact moment. It gives you an opportunity to have an external perspective. And you know what? It humbles you. You're whittled down, and there's a growth that comes from that. You learn a lot about yourself and the elements, and you know where you stand in life's grand perspective, down to the last twig that you didn't break. It becomes simply about breathing. I'll be 